And I am happy to welcome um, Dusty Hildebrand with us today. Um, he is our Workforce Center Manager uh, with Job Service North Dakota. He is here with us today to share the various services and events provided through Job Service ND, as well as ways to spread awareness of your job listings and creatively and creatively recruit employees. And so I thank um, Dusty for taking the time to be with here to, with us today. Um, it's a very important topic. I know not just soil conservation districts, everybody um, is competing for, for employees. And um, I look forward to to hearing his message today and hopefully give you some tips on, on how you can be a competitive employer. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dusty. And if you have any questions, um, you can type in the chat and we'll certainly um, pass those on. Maybe we wait till the end of your presentation. What do you prefer? It doesn't matter. Okay, so we'll um, Amber and I will keep an eye on the chat. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to you. I appreciate it. Well, good morning, everybody. I understand I'm Dusty Hillebrand. I'm the Workforce Center Manager out of Grand Forks. Um, this is a little bit of a new topic uh, for the crowd. I'm I'm a, I'm a city guy. Uh, I have friends that grew up farming and uh, out in the country there, but. Uh, I personally don't have a ton of experience um, in that world. So I'm gonna try sharing my screen with uh, you all. I'm not very good at Zoom Teams, no problem, Zoom. Um, that's another thing. Oh, look at that, there we go. All right, can everybody see that okay? Hi, I didn't screw it up, I'm proud of myself. All right, so, um, Move this over here. Pull this one over here. Okay. Uh, so we'll start off a little bit about Job Service North Dakota. Maybe. All right. I did screw it up. Look at that. Technology has been kind of a struggle today, so don't worry about it. It oh, happens right, to the good. best of us. <laughs> I'm normally am pretty good about this stuff, but not today. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so our mission is meeting workforce needs. Our business is providing workforce unemployment services. What we do is we connect employers with job seekers. We remove barriers uh, to employment, unemployment insurance benefits, labor market information, and who we are. Uh, we are re regional workforce experts. We are strong partners with employers, schools, local EDCs and chambers, and knowledgeable about local communities, current events, area resources, and local economies. Why is that important? Why do I have this slide up here? Well, this one right here, we have nine offices in the state. Um, and that's why we are we consider ourselves regional experts. I don't know everything that's going on over, over in Williston or Dickinson. I have an idea, but definitely not the expert. Um, but our managers out there and our offices in those in those areas and those regions uh, know um, what's going on. And they're your best resource for what you guys are trying to do. Um, we have offices, like it says here, Grand Forks, Fargo, Wapaton, Devil's Lake, Minot, Williston, Dickinson, Bismarck, and Jamestown. And uh, back in 2016, we had uh, more offices, um, but we uh, had to close a number of them um, in 2016. Um, okay, so here's just some um, statewide labor market information. In our system, in August, we had uh, 12,744 open um, jobs. That was down 9.1% from August of 23 and down 3.3% from uh, the month prior. Uh, healthcare is always number one in North Dakota, has been for the last number of years. Um, so why is this important? Uh, we are starting to see a possible, um, I don't want to say slowdown, but jobs are getting filled which is very interesting. Uh, we've had a number of employers say that, uh, you know, they're good right now. 
um, which uh, if you went back probably even five months ago, it wasn't quite like that. So it's uh, interesting. Um, education. So 49.2% require a high school diploma or no, no formal education. And 38.5% require a bachelor's or higher. And so uh, we have quite a bit of, of opportunity in this state for those folks that um, might not have that, that post-secondary education. 50% uh, require no training and 27.3% require short-term on-the-job training. Um, job openings by estimated hiring wage. So 40% of that 20 to 29.99, uh, so 29 $29.99. Uh, and 15.8% are in that $30 an hour plus. Now I know I was talking with Hannah and Amber um, last week, one of the things that was kind of a question about was some of the, um, where should salaries be yet for these types of positions? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so as you can see, 40, well, if we add it up, that's uh, 58, or 55.8% of jobs in North Dakota are over $20 an hour. Um, and the idea of, of a $7.25 um, cent of raise or an hour minimum wage in North Dakota is just something that we just, we don't see it. Um, honestly, I'm surprised when I see $14 an hour at some of our employers i ran across somebody at our job fair last week and they said well i asked how much are you guys paying it was 14 dollars an hour and i said well i can tell you why you're not getting anybody um okay this is one of our our interesting um maps that we have as an agency so this shows the unemployment rate for each county in north dakota currently if you see those red uh, counties those are the counties that are affected by the bobcat layoffs that are currently happening for most of the summer, July and August especially. Um, those states, once those folks go back to work, we'll see those, those will go back to pretty much where everybody else is. Rowlett County is always one of the highest counties in the state. Uh, but as you see, as you look around, Unemployment in North Dakota is very low. And so when you are um, struggling to find employees, to retain employees, um, there's a reason. And we have very low unemployment in North Dakota. <clears throat> um, all right, this, so labor market information. Uh, we've got smart folks that go out and collect all the information, uh, much smarter than I am. And they put it into a bunch of products so that everybody else can look at. And this is something that I use quite a bit. So we'll just jump into it. Okay, this slide uh, is very overwhelming it, to me. It's very colorful. I really, it makes my brain go, whoa, what's going on here? Here's the thing about this. When you're looking at this, these are the products that our labor market information folks put together for the public of North Dakota to look at. Um, so a couple of them that are really important. The dashboards, there's a, a lot of really good information uh, for those of you who are doing hiring in the dashboards. The employment and wages by occupation. Again, so going back to what I said a few minutes ago, um, if you're unsure about what you should be paying for wages for these positions, you can go into um, the employment and wages by occupation and um, look it up. <clears throat> they have a dashboard in there, but you can also go into the raw data and uh, pull all that information. Sometimes the dashboard works just peachy keen. And sometimes I need to go a little bit deeper into the information. And if you're finding something that you're just, you're not finding what you need, um, reach out to your business services folks that are in your area at your local job service office. Um, and
And if you need to know who that person is, you can certainly send me an email and I will uh, uh, find that person for you. <clears throat> and this is really going to help you look at what should I be paying? Because um, it's a struggle. It, it truly is. And I know you guys, uh, talking with Hannah and Amber last week, I learned quite a bit about what you, how you guys are funded um, through mills and, and that kind of stuff. So um, it's, it's limited, and I understand that. So uh, reach out to those folks. Another one that I really, really, truly like out of um, all the stuff that's here is our area profiles. The area profiles actually go into each county and they pull out a ton of statistics. And so if you ever need to uh, say, like, here's what we have going on in our county, go to area profiles, find the, the information that you're looking for, and you are armed with a lot of great information. So when folks say, well, why are we doing this? Here's the information. I bring our um, my error profile for our counties up here uh, with me to quite a few of, of the uh, um, meetings that I go to, or I have it pulled up on my phone so I can say, here's, here's the info that you're looking for. Um, so here is the employment and wages by occupation dashboard. And let me look around a little bit here. We've got a cost of living by county. Um, they just updated this dashboard. So you can really go in there and, and look at, you know, what is the cost for our county to live in? And there's uh, different variables that you can put into place. It is a best, I don't want to say guest, but best guest type of situation because there's so many variables that go into it. They modeled this after some, uh, I can't remember which um, school that, that originally put this together, um, but it, it'll get you close. The dashboard, as you can see, um, is, let's see here, right here. And it's pretty good. Um, our folks go through, typically it's running off of last year's um, wages because we have to wait a year to collect that information. Uh, that's one of the bad parts about our labor market information is that nationwide, it's typically always a year behind um, for when we get into to wages and stuff like that. And very evident um, between 2021 and 2022, um, when we had COVID really playing uh, with those numbers, we saw uh, quite a bit of a, a jump from folks getting back into the labor market. Okay. Um, workforce programs. So this is what we do. This is what our offices do. Um, one thing that folks think about with job service is that we're the unemployment folks, and we're not. Um, in our offices, we don't do unemployment. People can come in and and file. But um, what we do is uh, we serve employers, veterans, in-school youth, out-of-school youth, adults, dislocated workers, ex-offenders, new Americans, TANF recipients, SNAP recipients, parents uh, owing child support, and unemployment recipients. We help them find work. Um, really, we help everybody who comes in here. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about job service. Everybody is welcome. We, we're here to help uh, those folks that are looking for work, um, whatever it might be, or for those employers that are looking for work. Um, so a couple of our highlights. Um, so and work, the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, which you see is the WIOA on the right side of the screen. Um, this is going to be important for uh, you guys possibly in a little bit as we talk about on the job training. Uh, so in, uh, we've served 193, I th can't remember what years this is, this must be last year, uh, 484 adults and 12 dislocated workers. We served 370 uh, veterans. Um, the Workforce Opportunity Tax Credit could also be important for your um, different agencies. 
it is a tax credit to help um, that you get income tax back uh, for those folks that are um, in certain populations. So veterans, um, we call them justice involved. We'll need to change the ex offenders, but uh, those ex offenders um, that are within a certain certain uh, area or time um, when they got out, uh, folks that have some kind of disability. So we we went through twelve or fourteen thousand applications last year, and it, it really it's an opportunity for um, employers to take a chance on somebody because they're going to get a little reward for taking that chance. Um, and the H two A visa program. Um, so those of you who are possible farmers, um, you probably know all this or ranchers. You might know a little bit about the H two A visa program. Uh, we did 1,200 applications last year. We drove 83,000 miles for our inspections, and we did 17, almost 1,800 inspections for just over 4,000 workers. Job service does all of the inspections for housing for these folks to come here to make sure that they have a, a quality living area while they're here in the state working for um, farmers and ranchers. And so it's important that uh, we know that, that they're safe, but it's also important because they don't have to come back here to North Dakota. There's other states that are more than willing to take these H-2A workers. So we want to make sure that the housing that they have is suitable for them um, and so that they can uh, have a safe place and a, and a quality living spot while they're here. Uh, a couple of things that we do through the uh, um, years, we have personal job fairs or in-person job fairs, in-house hiring events. Uh, we served over 30, almost 30, not over, but almost 32,000 individuals last year. Um, we did uh, uh, made 16, almost 17,000 individual contacts and calls to workforce centers. This is all the people that we're working with every year. Um, okay, so let's go back. So when you're looking for workers, if you haven't contacted your local job service office, we have, so a number of us have big job fairs. Grand Forks, we just finished ours last week. We had 137 job seekers walk in. We had... Um, 80 or 53 employers that were part of our event. Um, Fargo just had one. Well, obviously they're three times the size Grand Forks is, so their numbers are even more. Um, uh, what, the Williston office does one or two a year. Um, Devil's Lake is uh, has one in the fall, one in the spring. But, uh, Minot's working on putting one together for folks out in the, in the Air Force Base. Our in-house hiring events, there's a few of our offices, uh, Bismarck Grand Forks and uh, Grand, uh, Bismarck Fargo and Grand Forks, we all have monthly job fairs. Um, it's a little bit different each day. We have a lot of folks that walk in here and if you uh, have the time, it's a great place to have the potential to meet folks. If you don't wanna be part of one of those events, you can just come into our offices and set up a hiring event for a day or two days or one day a week for a month and a half. And yes, it is can be taxing. Um, but that is how you're how to find folks. Um, if folks aren't coming to you, you need to go to them. Um, we have we have our, our job seeker website and I'll be the first one to say that it's not as popular as, some of our other events. Um, if you're looking at a, uh, or some of the other websites that are out there, Indeed, I don't know if Monster's even around anymore, everybody says Indeed. But the problem with those is that you might have to pay for those. Um, and if you've got the money to pay for that, cool. Um, there, It's there. Uh, but our, here's the thing about our system. Indeed, spiders are jobs that are in our system. They, they spider them into theirs. Um, and we do the same thing, vice versa. 
but um, our stuff is free. And so you can put your stuff into our system and typically it's going to get spidered into the, into Indeed um, because they're trying to make money off of advertising and employers. Um, and that's fine. That's what, that's what their business model does. Our stuff is, is free. It's already paid for um, by, you know, paying your taxes. Um, okay. I know I'm running out of time here, so I, I apologize. I'll try to get a little bit faster here. So um, one of the things that when you're, when talking with Hannah and, and Amber uh, last week, um, I learned a lot because I didn't grow up in this world, right? And so uh, the career view um, folks over at Be More Colorful, they have these uh, headsets that they put on. And they, all the school systems in North Dakota have these, every single one of them. Uh, and I know that because we helped deliver them to all the schools this past year. And um, it takes a little bit of money, but if you're willing, they will come out and videotape what is the the day in the life of these positions. And the kids will put them on and it is cool. And so it's got a 360 up and down all the way around. Um, they get to see what uh, what happens, um, like what it's like being on a job site. What does it look like? Um, it's really cool. And all this, all, like I said, all the schools have them. So there's another opportunity for you to get in front of them. Andre, how much time do we have left? We've got about seven minutes. Let's okay. go about five more, and then we'll leave some time for questions. Sounds good. I'll try to be fast. Um, okay. Okay, school events. So um, we are in front of high school students all the time. And one of the things I tell employers that if you're not in front of high school students, you're missing out because uh, they're the next folks that are going to step up. And and listening to um, Hannah and Amber, it, one of the things that they had um, talked about was the lack of health insurance. Um, so we need we need health insurance as we get older, right? But a lot of these kids that are going to be coming on, can they be a pain in the butt to work with? Absolutely. Um, I've got a 16 year old that I'll tell you what, it's a day, but these are the, these are the, the folks uh, that are coming up. These are the future of the workforce. And a lot of them can be on mom and dad's life insurance or health insurance until they're 26. So they might not need health insurance coverage, but they do need a good paying wage where they can get good experience so that they can be that be there to learn and maybe train the next folks coming in. So will there be turnover with this crowd? Absolutely. Uh, but a lot of them are really interested in, in staying here in North Dakota. So you need to be in front of those students. Um, the college events is another one that uh, we are a part of across the, the state. Um, UND just held a, a part-time career fair it was unbelievable, but every every high, uh, college, two year, four year, um, in the state does different events. It's another great opportunity to get in front of students. Um, we do a, a virtual job fair in uh, this next one. We have two coming up. One's veteran focus, which will be in Jan uh, November. One was in in Jan no, yeah, in January. Um, which is just open to everybody. Why is this important? We had multiple folks from, I think we had 20, 22 states that were, um, we had folks register from this past year and uh, a number of folks from overseas. And so, um, and I believe agriculture is one of our areas that we do focus on. So another opportunity for you to get in front of folks. Um, no idea. So we have a couple upcoming events, like I said, um, and I can try to send this to Hannah when I, I tried sending it earlier, but it, it was kind of goofy. So it wouldn't let me go through. Um, 
We have social media. So every, um, we post hot jobs. Each office pretty much will go out there and post jobs. Um, and so they're on this on the social medias. Um, I'm not on the social media as much, but as an agency, we are to get that information out there. And so again, you work with your local offices and you might be able to ask, hey, can I get on this week's social media um, hot jobs? More than likely, they'll say, yeah, uh, we can do that. Um, the podcast, the job pod, this is something that I do. And uh, it's we've had some really great guests. Um, we haven't had a lot on uh, um, agriculture, but we did do something on Grand Farms here a couple months ago, um, maybe last year. It was really good. Um, if you're interested in being on there and talking about what these positions uh, do and why they're important to the state and to the farming community uh, in general, um, please uh, reach out to me. Uh, we can figure something out. Our virtual one-stop system, we kind of already talked about this, but this is, um, we are the, this is we, this is what we do as an agency. We are the state uh, jobs database. Uh, we have a mobile app for um, phones. It works really well. Um, we're our employer, our, our business service folks are here to help you as employers. On the other side, we have our work uh, folks that help job seekers find work. And so we team up to make sure that we're doing as much as we can to help everybody. The best thing is there's no charge for our stuff and there's no ads or spam. We're in, we don't have to do that kind of stuff, which is really great. Um, here's the how to search or how to start getting into it. And honestly, there's just not enough time to um, go into all of it. But one thing I want to point out is that if you look on here, you can see that the salary. Please, 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 please make sure that when you are posting jobs, you are putting a salary out there. And it might be, well, I don't want other people to see what we're paying. Guess what? If you're not putting that information out there, they're not going to apply. And it it is, uh, I'll stand on top of every building in North Dakota and yell at the top of my lungs, please make sure that you're putting a salary out there or you're just not going to see the people apply for it. Um, but this is all the information that you can put in uh, into the system. Okay, did I make it? Yes, thank you, Dustin. Very useful information. And I've um, pasted some links in the chat and Amber has also put the onboarding checklist in there um, that has been developed for districts. But I, I just really appreciate you sharing this information with us. And I, I've experienced firsthand um, that if you don't put a salary on, people don't apply. <laughs> We posted a position as a board I'm on, and uh, the first time we posted, not a single person applied. And so we put salary on the next time, and we had applications. So it's it's a little thing, but it's a big thing. And I really appreciate your comments, too, about, you know, looking at salary and making sure that we're paying people enough. And I, I encourage districts to really look at what the cost of turnover is. I mean, it costs money to bring new people on too. And um, I know it's a challenge and, and budgets are tight, but I think um, one of our next steps too is maybe how we can think outside the box to provide maybe some non-monetary um, things for employees to to hopefully retain them to our districts. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, another thing I thought of as you're speaking, Dustin, I know some of the regional councils have um, worked in in recruiting workforce to their specific areas. So some of them have websites available as well. Okay, and um, Billy, we can certainly email out those um, links that I put in the chat. Um, it sounds like she's not able to... Um, open them. So yes, we will send those out. Um, and there's a question about what are some tips for finding or reaching people for seasonal work? Good question. Um, again, we there are a number of, of folks in North Dakota that look for seasonal work. Um, if 
put your information or work with your local office, set up an account if you don't have one, um, and uh, put your information in there. Um, again, we we have a lot of folks that go in and, and look at jobs, um, talk with your, your business service folks in your area, uh, and we'll post those jobs right in our office. And as folks come in, um, we have folks that, that will come in weekly looking for the right seasonal position. Um, you know, and then also one of the things, and I, we could talk for an hour probably on H-2A workers. H-2A workers are seasonal workers. They, um, it's not cheap to get, but a lot of them come here and uh, from where we, where those agents are drawing from, Eastern Bloc, Europe, and uh, South Africa. And they're willing to, um, they, they want to come here to give, make a better life. And they send a lot of that money back home for them, uh, for their families. So it is an expense up front for the employer. But um, if, and I'm not 100% sure if these positions would qualify for that, but it is an opportunity for uh, for you. Now, again, there's housing that, you know, you provide the housing um, and transportation for these folks and that kind of stuff. But um, it is an opportunity for those seasonal workers if you're in an area that might not have a huge workforce population. Um, but again, uh, work with your local offices to see how can I reach these folks. Um, and, and working with the, and I know depending on what the student is doing, um, if it's a high school student versus a college student, but you know, if you've got egg programs in your areas, uh, you should be talking to those teachers and explaining, hey, there's an opportunity for students to um, learn on the job and um, it might be, you know, once they graduate, hey, that's your next person um, to, to fill these, these full-time positions that you're looking for. But again, I understand there are, depending on what, there are, what the student is doing, there are some um, uh, laws that we have to follow to make sure that they're staying safe. Yeah, thank you for that. And we're a little bit over time. So if any of you need to leave, um, I understand that. But I think that was a um, really key point you made too earlier in the presentation, Dusty, is is engaging with youth um, at a really young age and just exposing them to the work that your soil conservation district is doing. I mean, you have some of them at Eco Ed Day, but engaging them whenever you can and some of those high school students, a lot of districts rely on, on high school students for those seasonal workers, um, particularly with tree planting. So um, are there any other questions? A lot of good information. Um, it's, a, it's a very important topic, I think, to all industries, uh, especially our soil conservation districts. And I just wish you all the best as you fill full-time positions as, as well as those seasonal positions. Um, and if there aren't any other questions, I think that's all we have. Um, we'll send out some of that information, those links um, to everyone. And thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time.